Hi everybody, Mary Mitchell here. How are you? How are you guys doing? Okay, so um, <clears throat> I'm still working on, well, I haven't really done a lot on the, um, the piece that I um, last recorded, but I will be getting to that. The reason I stopped is because a dear um, person I know, friend who I've known since I was very, very young, uh, asked me to, um, if she could borrow a painting for one of her retreats. And <clears throat> I wanted to give her what she wanted. Patty, this is for you. And um, so I'm, I'm, she sent me a reference photo, which I found on Fixabay. I downloaded it and, um, you know, make a few changes here and there. It won't look exactly like it. Uh, but it's uh, sort of a Caribbean feel. You know how the water is very um, beautiful in the sky. And uh, I love it. Love it. So um, this is what this is. This is for Patty. This is a uh, 36 by 36. It's, I did, uh, the, you will see that the beginning part is done with a spatula. And uh, then I'll start to incorporate the brush work but first I wanted to put it on with a spatula and some soft body paste to give it some um, <clears throat> texture and then I might use some gouache after I lay down the acrylic paint because I find gouache to be very user friendly it's sort of a combination between watercolor and acrylic and what makes it so good is that um, you're not stuck. If you paint something and you want to change it, you can. Unlike acrylic, where you really have to jet, you know, either you know, gesso it or go over it, however, however you want to change it, you, it takes a little bit of work. It's not a matter of simply adding more paint and more water and uh, changing it, which is what that, that's how easy it is with gesso. And I'm going to demonstrate that. Um, but first we're going to lay this down with some acrylic. We're going to just put our base down, the colors, and then we'll add our detail um, with some, with both acrylic and some gouache so that she can take this to, to her retreat, a retreat group and um, they can feel, you know, that they are relaxing and in the moment. Okay, be right back. Okay, let's go. So. Uh, what I did with this is, um, I know it's going awfully fast, and um, right now the only part that you're looking at is the lower, uh, the lower part, the water, the sand. Eventually you'll see me um, fill in the water. And what I did was I took some soft uh, modeling paste, and uh, made by Golden, this one is, and I mixed it with some titanium white, um, a little bit of sienna, and uh, I just wanted to give it a little bit of color loosely. And it's hard to see on here, I realize. So now, that was fast. <laughs> okay, so now here's, here's the, um, the water that I'm filling in according to what I see on the reference photo. And I'm gonna be changing this, making it darker and lighter in parts as I go along, but right now, all you see me do right here is this is the underpainting which I'm applying with a spatula and I'm using the modeling paste just to give it a little something you know um, not a not a lot of not a lot of texture but just some uh, depth and uh, because I'm going to be painting over this so I wanted to lay it down rather quickly and as you can see even though this is sped up about four times it still went fast but the hard part's coming up, and so I'm, I'm making it darker as I head up toward the top. Now, I divided the sky and the water with a piece of tape, which I move strategically uh, in a, f a few parts while I'm painting this until I get into the real detail, and I'll, I'll, you'll see it, and I'll point it out. Okay, so here's an oops moment. I thought that the recording that I had pressed record, and I did that entire part that you saw uh, with the phone up thinking uh, that I was recording the whole time and I wasn't. So uh, I'm a, I apologize for that. But what I'm showing you now is 
how I did it. And it's the same as the same way that I did the bottom. I mixed my colors up and I, um, you know, I put a little bit of modeling, soft modeling paste, not a lot, but I just went back and forth with my colors, some, some light, some dark. I wasn't too concerned uh, because I know that there's going to be a lot more being painted on to be painted on top of this. And um, I just wanted to show you the method. Um, I'm not going to be using this spatula once I'm done with this, uh, this underpainting. I'll be um, going to the brushes. Now here I speed it up and I'm showing you that I'm, I'm going down to the tape of which I end up taking off soon, but I'm, I'm taking the, the sky down to the tape and then eventually I'm going to be lifting up the tape and moving the tape, um, a new piece, and I'll be putting it across the top of the water because I don't want to mess up that the line, the horizon line. So you'll be seeing me do that in, in a minute. But in the meantime, I'm, I'm taking advantage of this and I'm darkening the water because as the water goes out, you know, further away into the distance, it gets darker. And then of course, as it comes in closer, it starts to uh, become, you know, the sky, uh, the sky is what really colors the water. Water has no color. Uh, you know, it's colored by what's around it. Uh, the elements, uh, the sand, etc. I'm, I'm not a scientist or anything like that, but I know water is clear, uh, not blue. So anyway, I'm painting in the, um, making it darker, making it lighter. Um, now here I take the tape off and I'm, I want to blend the sky into the horizon, which I start to do. And then I realize I better be careful and let me stop and put some tape and here's what I do. I put the tape back on the water so that I can bring that sky down and blend it in. Uh, you know, because it's also with the sky, it uh, tends to be lighter uh, toward the bottom and darker toward the top. Not in every case, I'm sure, but in this case, that is the exactly how, how it is. So this the, the uh, water gets darker as it goes out. The sky gets uh, darker as it goes up. So I'm bringing it down to the tape so that I don't ruin the horizon line. So as I'm working on bringing the sky down to the you know, horizon line, I, um, I take advantage of it and I, uh, I, I work a little bit on the water, uh, mixing some colors, some turquoise, um, some teal, I'm sorry, and some, I forget what the color is called, but I'm going to list all the colors down in the description um, after I publish this. And I'm playing around with some colors based on what I see in the reference photo and um, just, just seeing, you know, what makes sense. And sometimes yeah, you know, I don't expect to get it exact, but I'd like to get it as close as possible. Um, and again, I'm not trying, I, always, I say this often, I'm not trying to paint a photograph here, but getting the colors right for me is, is important in this case. So um, the line toward the horizon, as the water, as I explained, as the water goes out, there's like a strip of dark blue almost um, right at the edge of the horizon and I I take my brushes out eventually and I start to paint that in and and it's a um, it's not as easy as it looks <laughs> for me anyway because I'm very I, I tend to be very hard on myself and um, and I shouldn't be nobody should be this is a painting and and um, it's not that it's not fun, you know, it is. Um, and, but for me, I get a lot of enjoyment out of when I have something in my mind of how something is supposed to, or how I want it to, to be. Um, I have fun trying to get there. Sometimes it's frustrating, but it's all part of the journey. So here I took the tape off and I'm getting close, really, I'm really um, living dangerously trying to paint close to that line. Eventually I come to my senses and I realize I have to put a tape back up on the top of the sky, the horizon of the sky, because I don't want to mess that line up. 
So I, I do eventually do that uh, so that I don't have to worry so much about um, going over the lines. <laughs> not that wouldn't be not that it wouldn't be easy to fix. No, of course it would be. But then the next minute you know you're moving the line up and uh, you know uh, it can get it can get pretty pretty crazy uh, from my experience at any rate. So um, I'm about to explain that right now. So I what I did is I put the tape back on <laughs> because I worked hard to get that line straight. So I'm going to keep it that way. Okay, so now I am at liberty. Now I feel I'm a little more relaxed about getting that um, horizon line on the water exactly how I want it to be. I'm not as worried about going into the sky and, and you know, having it become uneven or moving it up and moving it down because I can't get a straight line. It's not as easy as you think. Some people are better at it though. But I rely on the tape. So, I mean, this is frog tape. It doesn't stick to paint typically. Um, occasionally, if you don't, you know, if you put it on when the paint is um, still drying, you'll get, you will, some of it can come off. So try to wait until it's dry um, if you can. So here I am. I'm, I'm, as you can see, the line is, uh, I'm, I'm using a um, slant brush. Uh, and it's a knife brush, call it what you want. And I am very, very, um, not as carefully as I have to be, as I said, because I have the tape, but I'm trying to get the color exactly as I, again, has I think it should be. Um, and um, the pressure is off. <laughs> so I start to go uh, down into the rest of the body of the water. And I take a larger brush, as you saw, it was a larger filbert brush. And now I'm, I just feel really um, set free <laughs> that the, uh, the, you know, the, the lines have been drawn and I can now get into, really get into the painting as I want to. And let's see what happens with this. You know, I said in the beginning that I was going to be using gouache and I'm having second thoughts about that, but um, I'm still going to work with the acrylic first and I would like to uh, use some gouache in this painting. I think it will be fun to do the clouds with it. So that's what I'm thinking. Um, the shoreline, I can see myself using uh, extra soft body modeling paste for that with the, to make it foamy, to make it a little more three dimensional. And, um, uh, and maybe with the clouds, the bottom of the clouds, and then using the the gouache for the top of it. Well, we'll see. You know, it's just sort of a thing that it's um, a process, and you feel your way along, and you decide what makes sense and what works for the painting.